Hello, Legacy Boxing Showcase, sponsored by Legacy Boxing Promotions, Head S Collision. Ed Nunez, along with Austin Colleen. And Austin, you know, we uh, haven't been on in a while, but I'll tell you, since we haven't, there's been some great cards. First, Legacy Boxing Showcase, Manuel Lujan State Fairgrounds, a great card there. You were very pleased with the fights that you saw. Also, Holmes Boxing last Friday night at the Embassy, the return of Fidel Maldonado Jr. And talk about his, uh, you talked about, okay, he had a fight in uh, Buffalo Thunder in February, and you weren't impressed. You weren't impressed. Not at all. But you think this fight last Friday at the Embassy might have resurrected his career? I think it definitely did. Uh, he just came out of that cave. I don't know. Who, he, he was just a different fighter. He fought a better opponent than he did in February. And uh, Johnny Gonzalez, and Gonzalez was quick. He throws with power, never been out, never been stopped. And you could argue Fidel won all eight rounds. His reflexes were really sharp. He put on a couple of rounds, he put on a clinic. If uh, anybody wanted to figure out how to fight like a left-hander, all he had to do was watch that fight because you could just watch it three, four, five times. And the importance of having your lead foot outside of your opponent, you using your right hand instead of your left hand for throwing hooks, he was landing to the body and the head. And then he was coming in with right left hands because it, uh, softball fights the opposite of an orthodox fighter. And he was landing some beautiful body shots uh, from the left hand side. And uh, he just he just really was very, very good. And Steve Garcia, who we've had as a guest, his daughter won again. Jordan. Jordan. Oh my God, Garcia. She yeah. decisioned uh, the fighter she was fighting, unanimous decision, I believe. Mendoza, I believe her name. Right. Yeah. You, oh, yeah. Uh, this was a six rounder. And that girl that she beat, she's a softball. And I asked her father, they were the semifinal. Did your daughter watch Fidel's performance? And she didn't. And I think that was a mistake because she wasn't uh, technically skilled like Fidel. Fidel was like a machine. He was always getting that lead foot outside of his opponents. And if you can get your lead foot outside of a, it doesn't matter if you're the orthodox fighter in a softball, you're just harder to hit. Well, I'll tell you what, it's quite a turnaround because in February, He's more defensive. He does get the decision up at Buffalo Thunder. People but were You said it wasn't the most entertaining bout that you've seen, and you've seen thousands of them. So two months later, now again, too, Fidel Maldonado Jr. has alluded to him changing to being a vegan. And maybe, you know, all those things, he really is a big proponent of that. Uh, he's talked about that. So maybe all those things and some uh, different training for, uh, techniques from his father, Fidel Maldonado Sr., and also Manuel Anaya, contributed to what sounds like a great victory. Well, we had another guest here a few, a few maybe two months ago when we had David Rios, the body the boxing, the, 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 the uh, referee. referee. But he's a fanatic on what to eat for your body. And Fidel talked about dropping down in his next fight to 130 pounds. And David Rios thinks that's a mistake. I think that's what Fidel weighed the other night. There wasn't an ounce of fat on him. And David's fear is if he goes to 130, he'll have no power. Where if he stays, you know, go down to 135 maybe, but don't go down to 130. Okay. Now that's that's uh, his opinion. David Rios, again, you mentioned the uh, training and nutritionist. I know he's uh, also helped you as well. Let's talk about some other fights that uh, the, the switching back to legacy boxing. Um, Josh Pitbull taught us big eighth round TKO of Contreras. What do you think? I mean, again, we had had Josh on a couple weeks ago. And he's looking for, you know, he said he might get an offer. Was that fight enough to get Josh Pitbull toward us a big offer? It was his fifth straight knockout. You know, when he, he won one, he won beat Christian Cabral. You know, he's starting to get a little interest in him. But all of a sudden, the cumulative effect, you'll look back, he's won five straight fights. And uh, I can't say anything on the air, but there's, Rumors out there, one name I've heard kicked around, which if it happened would be very impressive. Uh, right on our show, a fight that I seem to be in on my minority on, I still say bring Jose Marufo here for a third fight with Josh. 
because Marufo just scored a huge upset win on the West Coast. He defeated an undefeated fighter. And uh, so for some reason, Marufo style bothers Josh. So Josh could make a real statement if he could knock off Marufo. Just having Pitbull on the show the, the, the way that we have and his comments, I think he's, you know, nothing against uh, Marufo, but I think just the way Josh was talking last time, I think he's got his eyes on something else. That's just the way I look at it. Maybe it happens. I know he was supposed to fight Zab Judah. That fell through. Uh, you know, we, we're big Josh Pitbull Torres fans. Uh, Marufo, another fight against him would be good. But I think in Josh's mind, just the way he was talking to us the last time he was on the show, he's got his eyes on a bigger oh, prize. No question. But Marufo now has value because of this win over an undefeated fighter on the West Coast. And obviously, Marufo upset the house fighter. Marufo is used to being the opponent. Josh now has a, he's always had a friendly fan base here in, in Albuquerque. People love him. And he's extremely popular right now. His popularity is at an all-time high, I would say. Yeah, no doubt. Twice he's climbed the mountain back in 15 when he beat the fighter from Australia. He was on the top. And then he lost three out of his next four fights. And now he's reborn again. Five straight knockouts. Knockouts. So we'll have to see what happens there. Let's talk about some more fights on the legacy boxing card that night. Uh, Lorenzo Benavides, another <laughs> another win. And Lorenzo Benavides, I mean, if you if I saw the weigh-ins, right? I know right. you were there. We were in the back. I couldn't really see. I was way in the back. But if you look at Lorenzo Benavides, you're probably thinking, hey, man, this, is a, you know, he's, this guy throws some bombs. He's five feet two. That's the start. He's the last guy that knows it's raining. He is short, five feet two. <laughs> and uh, when you think of it, his Golden Glove days, he fought as high as 230 pounds. So he could duck punches standing up straight. And uh, but Talk he's, about that left hand he throws. Talk well, about that. Well, the, the other thing is he's, he's down to 174. In his first pro fight, he was 213. His second one, 192. His third one... 174. He may wind up as a welterweight. And as you said, that's you a stretch, though. Would you say that that's a stretch? I don't know. It's a lot of weight to drop. And remember, you talked about do you take the power with you? You know, I mean, you well, so far that. he does. At 174, he was strong. Um, I can't pronounce uh, the other fighter's last name, unfortunately. All right. Well, we'll uh, we're going to have Abraham Pettis in studio. We'll be back to Legacy Boxing Showcase after these messages. This one made me feel all special. High school sports are back. The 2018-19 season kicks off, and you could watch every ProView Network broadcast live on the NFHS Network. Every moment, from every game, from every sport, including all NMAA state championships. Get your highly discounted monthly pass now. Go to ProViewNetworks.com and sign up. Watch New Mexico's best.
Well, I'm going to the frontier, walking to the cashier, order up a root beer and a number one. Cover it with green stuff, one scoop is not enough. Find a booth is real tough, back by the Duke. Meet my family, meet my friends in the quirkiest restaurant I have ever been. All of Albuquerque's favorite spot, it's the Frontier Restaurant. The Frontier Restaurant is a proud supporter of ProView Sports Network. Don't sacrifice quality and flavor when you're in a hurry. Golden Pride offers ribs, fried chicken, green and red chili breakfast burritos, and Frontier Cinnabons. Four great locations, or visit us online at goldenpride.abq.com. Golden Pride Barbecue Chicken and Ribs, proud supporter of ProView Sports Network. Folks, there's no other way but to be all in. Either he's Lord of all or he is not Lord at all. And you can experience the real and authentic, true life change that only God can provide to humanity. See, when we truly encounter Jesus and purpose to know him and follow his teachings, hashtag life change will occur. Get into the game with Garden Swartz Team Sales. They have everything you need from screen printing, embroidery, and digital printing services, high school letterman jackets, and all high school and club uniforms and individual and team apparel with the most reliable brands like Speedline, Rollins, and Wilson. And don't forget to check out the latest F7 shut helmet. It's all at Garden Swartz Team Sales. Give them a call, 505-884-1234. Garden Swartz Team Sales. The New Mexico High School Coaches Association, established in 1941, is an organization of New Mexico's best and most professional interscholastic coaches. Coaches across work daily to help our student athletes excel in the classroom, on the field of play, and in our communities. Students that participate in interscholastic activities attain higher grades, higher graduation rates, and higher wages. Responsible for the North-South All-Star Games, statewide coaches award program, and providing multiple professional development opportunities for New Mexico's coaches. Be a great coach by coaching beyond the game. What is glamour? Frailty. What is desire? Diamonds. They say a life lived without passion is hardly worth living. Ma'am. 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 Dang, this one made me feel all special. High school sports are back. The 2018-19 season kicks off, and you could watch every ProView Network broadcast live on the NFHS Network. Every moment, from every game, from every sport, including all NMAA state championships, Get your highly discounted monthly pass now. Go to ProViewNetworks.com and sign up. Watch New Mexico's best. Welcome back to the Legacy Boxing Showcase, sponsored by Legacy Boxing Promotions, Pettis Collision. Ed Nunez along with Austin Colleen. And in studio with us, three-time Golden Glove champion, Abraham Pettis. Abraham, big win this weekend. Uh, wow. Uh, we're so glad to have you. It's been a while. It's been a while since you've been on. Yeah. So we're always glad to have you. Mm -hmm. uh, great victory. Uh, you're climbing up the ladder. Just you know, just like uh, your brother, Aldo yeah. and Angel Babe. You guys are, are progressing so beautifully. Yeah, thank you. And it's hard not to. Of course, we're going to root for you, man. Of course, we're homers. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> of course, Good. we are. So, uh, Austin, take it away. Well, following that vein, you, your brother, and uh, Josh Torres are hogging our show. It seems like one of you is always our guest. <laughs> That's okay, though. <laughs> right. It's, it's okay. These are some photogenic, <laughs> handsome young guys. Man, we'll take that. All right. But uh, <laughs> I thought your performance the other day was uh, really impressive. Yeah. You fought uh, Fabian Men Mendez, I believe. Yes, and I've covered a couple of Fabian's fights mm -hmm. in the amateurs. And I was really impressed with him. He's a very good fighter. Yeah. So I felt bad the other day. I went over and talked to him because you literally destroyed him in a round. Yeah. And that shows the difference between 
competing at the local level and competing internationally. Because yeah. you fought in Europe, you fought uh, all over our country, and you've been doing this for several years. Yeah. And uh, you, when you took him out with that left hook to the body, mm -hmm. oh my God, he was in pain. Yeah. There, there was no other, and mm -hmm. I felt bad for him because, uh, you know, not that I didn't want I didn't want to, you to lose, but <laughs> yeah. But he is actually a good fighter. He, mm -hmm. I don't think he thought he could get destroyed like that, and yeah. I don't think he could either. <laughs> Talk yeah. about that a little bit about your approach to you know the, to the body, because a lot of people that don't you know don't understand boxing, and I've never been in the ring, but yeah. I've seen Bernard Hopkins knock out Oscar De La Hoya with that oh my goodness that liver shot. So yeah. Talk about your approach and. And you took him out around. We'll yeah. Talk about that a little bit. Uh, I was pretty much just mixing up all my punches, just confusing him, keeping him uh, to where he can't like get comfortable. And so uh, it was pretty much my first time stopping someone to the body. So I thought it was pretty pretty amazing because the body is just like it paralyzes. Once you hit it to the liver, it's like it paralyzes the body. It, Stops it to breathe, you know. Well, no wonder De La Hoya couldn't continue. That time. <laughs> Hopkins yeah. caught him square on the liver. Yeah. Square on the liver, he couldn't catch his breath. Mm -mm. Um, a, a first round sensational knockout, and talk about where you feel like your career is going. I, mean, I think your brother, you and your brother, <clears throat> are progressing so beautifully and so yeah. so nicely. And you know, we're right there, ringside seats for it. So talk about where you're going from here. You're you're the three time state champion, mm -hmm. and he's plans to turn pro soon. Or yeah, you know, yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm three state. I'm three time state champion, and uh, hopefully to become three time regional champion too. Uh, in Denver, Colorado, it's gonna be the 27th. So I'm staying maintained on weight, and uh, from there, uh, when I win uh, regionals, I'll head to Tennessee, Chattanooga, Tennessee, and I believe that's probably in another two weeks after that tournament. So that's that. But no, um, the the international experience helped me a lot, a lot, a whole lot. And then aside from sparring my brother and uh, Jason, everybody, is, I'm getting a lot of help from everybody. I appreciate it. That's certainly helping you climb and get yeah. better. The international experience must have been incredible. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was, it was amazing, honestly. Working at the, at the Olympic Training Center, like just going through like different routines, things I've never done. It was, it was different. It was a good experience. Because you're fighting people with different styles, mm -hmm. uh, southpaws, all kinds of unorthodox styles. Yeah. It has to help. It has oh, to yeah, help. a whole lot of different faces, man. For sure, it helps a lot. Austin. Well, I thought the big mistake that uh, Fabian made, when you're fighting a superior opponent, and you could maybe relate this to basketball, don't wait on them trying to figure out what they're going to do because you yeah. find better to go forward to be aggressive. Mm -hmm. You probably, at least you're doing something. He was trying to react to you and it was yeah. just ridiculous. Yeah. Last year when you won the Golden Gloves title, uh, I thought the kid got off to a good start against you. I'm sorry, this was the regional. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then you did yeah, something regionals. with your wrist. Yeah. And, and <laughs> so... His opponent stopped being the aggressor, started s staring at us, and then, of course, you owned him for the next two and a half rounds. Yeah. Because he was <laughs> waiting on you, and you got too many skills. You yeah. can't afford to do that. I don't know if your experience in basketball, a good team against a great yeah, team. Yeah, no, you know, there's there's some uh, definite parallel, uh, parallels. But, heck, man, when you're got in the ring and you got leather, man, I mean, you know, we may lose a basketball game, but I'm, you know, I'm not going to get my my nose fractured or something like that. <laughs> yeah, if I don't, uh, yeah, if I don't perform well, but uh, I always looked at it as a war in itself. But it's way different. Let's be honest. Of course, you know, we're, I'm a competitor too. I hate yeah. to lose, but I think uh, all the things that your you know, your brother sensational knockout mm -hmm. in his uh, bout. So talk a little bit about the training from your father and uh, your uncle, who mm -hmm. are your trainers and managers. Yeah. And talk a little bit about that because again. The way you're climbing the ladder is so beautiful. We, we get to see it all the time. Yeah. So talk about what they've worked on with you that they've asked Abraham Pettis to work on. I'm, I work I worked a lot more on not waiting, you know, not waiting on the other person to come at me because pretty much uh, for regionals the and, and this last uh, state tournament, the guys were waiting and pretty much look where, it, like, look where it got them, you know. Like it doesn't do good to just wait around and wait for the person to throw the punch. It, it always doesn't work like that. I gotta ask you this though. Okay, you're right, right? You're right. You're right there. But there's also the cautionary thing about being too aggressive and leaving yourself 
wide open. Yeah. So what do you, you know, what do you, because you, again, you and your brother both yeah. first round knockouts. So if somebody's telling you something, and you know, you know uh, because a lot of people are cautious, right? They go in there, oh, yeah. feel the opponent out, mm -hmm. you know, and you're not you and your brother these last two fights. Yeah. So what is that aggressiveness? I mean, because sometimes you're, you're going to throw a punch and you're worried I'm going to get hit. Yeah. Or if I leave myself open. Mm -hmm. So I think your confidence is growing with each fight, and the aggressiveness seems to be really working for you. Yeah. Yeah, I believe I believe that uh, throughout each fight I've been getting a little more better, more comfortable with being inside, inside the inside the opponent. You know, more. Um, rather than being outside, because I, I mean I can do that, you know I can be outside, but I'm I'm still trying to work on being inside, you know, close close up, but close quarters. Yeah, with uh, with each fight, it, it's I've got, I've gotten better, you know. I can admit I've gotten better. Just every time, every time I throw a combination, just keep that head movement, you know, stay it's slippery. Still working and training, yeah. and you're still working and developing, and yes, then, uh, working on your skills. You're 19 years old, man. Mm. 19. Yeah. So we got we got some ways to go, Austin. <laughs> well, his opponent was 21. Uh, so if anybody had man strength, you would figure <laughs> yeah. his opponent. But the yeah, use, right. what we're talking about with sitting back waiting, in the main event, Cody Chavez was, well, I shouldn't say the main event, Cody Chavez was mm -hmm. the defending champ. Yeah. And yet uh, Jorge uh, Madrid went after him. He didn't oh, yeah. sit back and try to figure him. He went... And he upset him and won yeah. the, uh, the, uh, the 132 the pounds. You never know. Let's take a break, and we'll be back to Legacy Boxing Promotions after these, these messages. That's it. Well, I'm going to the front to walk to the cashier order of the room. Beer and a number one. Cover it with green stuff. One scoop is not enough. Find a booth is real tough. Back by the Duke. Meet my family, meet my friends in the quirkiest restaurant I have ever been. All of Albuquerque's favorite spot. It's the Frontier Restaurant. The Frontier Restaurant is a proud supporter of ProView Sports Network. Don't sacrifice quality of flavor when you're in a hurry. Golden Pride offers ribs, fried chicken, green and red chili breakfast burritos, and Frontier Cinnabons. Four great locations or visit us online at goldenpride.abq.com. Golden Pride Barbecue Chicken and Ribs, proud supporter of ProView Sports Network. Get into the game with Garden Swords Team Sales. They have everything you need from screen printing, embroidery, and digital printing services, high school letterman jackets, and all high school and club uniforms and individual and team apparel with the most reliable brands like Speedline, Rollins, and Wilson. And don't forget to check out the latest F7 Shut Helmet. It's all at Garden Swords Team Sales. Give them a call, 505-884-1234. Garden Swords Team Sales. Welcome back to Legacy Boxing Showcase, sponsored by Legacy Boxing Promotions, Pettis Collision, Ed Nunez, along with Austin Colleen and Abraham Pettis, three-time Golden Glove champion. Thanks so much for joining us, champ. It's always good to have you on, man. Thank you for having me. Yeah, we're learning so much more about you. I mean, you're so young, and you're, you're, you're uh, doing great things. And you know what? We feel, at least in this place and, you know, around Albuquerque, that, man, you're, the sky's the limit here. And I love what you said, when I win regionals. I love that, man. Yeah. You didn't say if. Oh, you yeah. said when. There you Gotta go. love it. Gotta so love it. Stay positive. And yeah. Stay confident. But you do with the like I told you during the break. You do with a quiet humility, which I admire and respect so much. Yeah. And you and your brother, um, Austin. Go ahead. Well, um, what was exciting about this show two years ago? There wasn't even a single fight for the Golden Gloves. He agreed to fight Zachary. Uh, Jakes, I believe his name was. Jacquez. 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 Say how, so tell everybody how that worked, Austin. Go ahead. Okay, well, two years. Uh, Golden Gloves, not just here, across the whole country, is being really murdered by the rules set down by USA Boxing. So two years ago, we didn't even have one fight. So Abraham agreed to fight Zachariah just to see who would take 114 and who would take 123. But they were both going. So last year, we actually had three contests. This year we had six contests. So we're going in the right direction. And I don't know how the rest of the country is doing. I know they're having trouble where I come from up in Lowell where they have always had the regionals. So I think it's really important 
to see the glass is half full, not half empty. And uh, uh, now we have some girls going on and Shariah Maru will be fighting in the regionals. Yeah. But she had what they call a walkover bout. She didn't have to fight anybody. So the girls, we got to get some girls to actually have to fight. That will be the next big step to lead. Shariah Maru, mm -hmm. again, a rising star here yeah. in Albuquerque, trained by her father, uh, Yoruba Maru. And, you know, she's been, you went, I think, the international boxing with you. She went, she yeah. was on the same trip that mm -hmm. you were. So, uh, I'm sorry, Austin, go ahead. No, no, you're doing great. Uh, one thing I kid, um, no, I forget the father's name. Uh, <laughs> Yoruba. I'm having, Yoruba. Yeah. Uh, is the fact that he has no overhead in his gym. There's no, there's no yeah. roof. <laughs> Alejandro Castillo, who has runs a boxing gym in Albuquerque, had the same. You know, he had his boxing gym in a little warehouse, so mm -hmm. he had no overhead as well. And he does a great job too. No, he's there. literally the ring is in the backyard. There's no wall. No overhead at all. No, there's no, <laughs> overhead. no overhead at all. You you, you mentioned uh, in Colorado. You said the 27th. Is that April or May? Uh April. So that's just a couple yeah. of weeks away. Oh yeah. So like, you got one fight out of the half. way, yeah. right? Now, in, in preparation for that, which, how do you turn around so quick? I mean, you're, you're still staying on your training yeah. and your, your regimen. And, you know, you weren't so uh, beat up out of this fight. You beat him up. And then what I mean is you knocked him out. Yeah. So you're, you're fresh and ready to go. So yeah. how do you maintain your, your, your training and diets? I'm guessing it's still, the, there's some great pictures there. I'm guessing it's still the same for your, Oh, yeah. That's no, a great picture. That's, yeah. That's uh, <laughs> Fabian right there. Yeah. Mendez. And... Uh, Okay, here's our team photo. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see Shariah sure in the I last am. row on the left side, the second person standing next to our heavyweight. Yeah. And uh, a lot of the kids that got the walkouts, they weren't even there for the photo. So, uh, and then I don't... That's a photo you took at the uh, post-13. Right. right. I'm not as good as some of the great photographers. Yeah. Had, but I... That's the best I could do. But anyway, yeah. back to my question. How do you, you just maintain <clears throat> what you've been doing, right? I mean, yeah. talk about a little bit about your road work and what you put in yeah. uh, a week. How many miles do you put in? I mean, you're in the ring, you're, you're on the road. Yeah. Talk a little bit about that. Um, I do I do a little conditioning with a trainer that my dad has me with. And then um, uh, aside from my conditioning, I do get my road work. Uh, I do run like four miles uh, probably like every other day. And then... Uh, weekends, weekends, I pretty much go up into the mountains, six miles. So I keep I keep my conditioning up to date as well as my diet. Try not to go crazy, you know. Uh, but I say after the fight, I went ahead and had some late night munchies. But uh, other than that, I, I eat pretty light. I drink a lot of water, a lot of fluid. Hydrate. Yeah, it's it's mostly like water weight that I lose anyway, because uh, I'm probably like six pounds over my my fight weight. Right now? Mm hmm You still got a couple weeks to lose that. Yeah, and it's I'll lose it, like, easy. Of course, you know, at 19, all water. you'll have no problem. The rest of us have problems, <laughs> but you won't. I'll yeah. got about a minute left. Let's wrap it up. Well, obviously, you're concerned about your own progress, but I know you're a very nice person. What would you say to Fabian uh, Mendez to try to, because uh, he may have lost his confidence. Yeah. What would no. you, well, if you were giving him a tip or two. Yeah, it's... Keep, keep your head up, man. I mean, um, sky is not the limit. I mean, the man managed to make it to the moon, you know? So keep your head up. Keep doing your thing. Just train harder, and you'll get there. All right, it's awesome. Words there. Abraham Pettis, three-time Golden Gloves champ. Thanks so, so, so much for being our guest. Thank today. you, you sir. Know, best of luck in yeah. everything you do, man. Everything you do. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me, Austin. For uh, producer Josh Brown, Austin Colleen, three-time Golden Glove champion Abraham, Abraham Pettis, I'm Ed Nunez. We'll be back in two weeks for another episode of Legacy Boxing Showcase. I didn't get